Yes, they've decided to play on what's left of the wildebeest carcass. So we've figured out what they have eaten. It looked like wildebeest, which is the horns that I could see. Um, we had a quite a nice sighting just now. I'll show you some pictures of the youngsters playing on a fallen tree. It was actually very beautiful. Um, it was lovely, but you were all enjoying the very cute little cubs and whatever they may have been doing, which is nice to see tiny little lines too. And these guys are quite far away. They we're on the other side of the uh, lugger. Um, so we're on the, the eastern side of the lugger. The lines are actually on the western side. But there are many cars there. <laughs> we're safe this side, which is good. And look how comfortable they are around the vehicles. They don't care that the paparazzi are out and photographing them. Some of the youngsters are actually putting on a show as if they were born for this, you know, ready for the, the limelight. I think they're going to have to eat something again soon. None of them have particularly big belly bellies. So I did see lots and lots of zebra around, but they're moving off. And it explains why they're moving off, because there's an entire pride of lions around here. So I wonder what they'll go after, whether it will be uh, during the day or maybe a little bit later. Perhaps they'll wait for the cover of darkness. Who knows? But they're definitely going to need to eat something again. And Madel, you're wondering in what age could you tell the sexes of the cubs? If you have a good enough look, you can pretty much tell it with after the first couple of weeks. It's just you've got to look very carefully and hope that they're facing the right way and that they stay still for long enough uh, to to sort of see them. Um, but it, it can get a little bit confusing, like I say, especially when you're in long grass constantly. Sometimes it doesn't allow for you to see the an entire lion. Um, but again, from from relatively young, obviously as the males start to get a little bit older, you start to, in about six months or so, you, you start to notice a little bit of a fluffiness around the neck area, just very subtly, and then as they start to get close to a year, it becomes more and more prominent, and so on as they continue aging, and when they reach about six years old or so, six and a half years old, normally their mane is quite large, and sometimes you even get lucky and they get hairy elbows, that's how far that mane stretches over the shoulders. So we've got two of the male lines um, that we saw yesterday here. I haven't seen the third one. That's not to mean that he's not here. He could just be laying down in the grass. Perhaps he's already gobbled up as much as he can. And we've got a youngster again trying to get some attention from a big male. He, to me, he's the most beautiful out of the lions I've seen so far of the Kichwa boys. Now, Rishi, you're wondering if the lions will eat the wildebeest horn. Uh, no, I don't think that they they will. They have already digest um, a keratin very well. It's the hyenas that are unbelievable when it comes to digesting shards of bone, as, as well as, of course, skin and keratin. Um, lions will typically leave it. The youngsters might play on it and chew on it, especially if they're young and uh, their new adult set of teeth are coming through. You know, it might be nice to chew around. It, but um, other than that, no, they'll they'll just leave it. Look at these youngsters; they re they can't help themselves. They're just in absolute awe and mesmerised by this big male. And I mean, you can see why. Imagine being a little lion looking up at something with such a great mane and so big and powerful. Especially when they roar, I'm sure they must get so excited. But you do, you see more of a fascination with cubs, with male lions, big male lions, than you do with the females. Obviously, they love the females. They go, they get groomed. But normally, mom, mom reprimands them quite a bit too. And then when they get out of hand and play too much, you see the males slap them about too. And they can be quite rough. Sometimes the males um, don't realize their strength and they can hurt young cubs. I mean, these boys would have sired the, these youngsters, so they don't want to kill them. But a, a full swat from one of these male lions could quite easily break a cub's back. And again, you just catch a male lion on the wrong day, in the wrong mood, and it could be quite treacherous for those youngsters. Here he sits. I'm just hiding a bit away behind all the trees. Now, I think they're getting ready to settle down now. It's, like I said, it's going to be quite hot. And they, they have got a nice tree that I think will cast some shade. They might have to split up just slightly, as I don't know if there'll be enough shade for all of them. But I think that they will be here again this afternoon. I am, I've had a scan around. I don't think that there is anything 
that looks appetizing. Besides, of course, there's all those buffalo, but I think they're going to leave them alone. Um, we know how the big herds of buffalo react around lions, especially if uh, lions get too inquisitive. I'm just going to chase them away. So what we might do is we might actually move on from here and perhaps go and try and find some other lions. Because these guys are particularly far away. But let's go back across to Brent now, who is still sitting with, uh, well, a lioness and her youngsters.